Hi, so this is my comic haul review of the past two weeks. <laughs> it's quite a chunk. <laughs> so see how it goes. Um, hopefully the volume picks up okay, because again, I've not got a microphone at the moment. So we're going to start with, oh my God, DC. <laughs> which is this pal here. There's a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 DC Comics. Fuck, this is gonna take a while. Um, you'll notice there's no Marvel. I've stopped Marvel, completely stopped it. Going forward for my Marvel, I'll mostly just get trade collections of stories that I want. I don't, I was getting the X-Men titles, but I don't like the X-Men, I like Uncanny X-Men, but it's not gonna cross over. So I just thought, Ugh. I was getting Deadpool, but I thought, is it worth getting? Because there's a UK reprint of Wolverine and Deadpool, so I might just get the UK comic instead. Um, it, it's basically just the quality of the comic. The stories are fine, it's just the quality of the production, the paper, the amount of pages get for what they charge. So I just thought, I'll stop it. Plus, DC's bringing up a shed load of stuff, what I really, really want to get. So, you've got a budget, it's got to be sensible, and just get what you really enjoy. And what I really do enjoy is DC, Image, and other companies. Marvel's way low on my list. It's no criticism against them, it's just not my particular taste. I used to like the old Marvel in the 90s, early aughts, and before then. I just don't like since Disney sucked them over. I just find them very meh. But there we go. So, <laughs> Uh, it's got to be a long video this, especially if I'm waffling like this. So I'm going to start with Batman. So I stopped Batman, I gave a rant about Chip Zdarsky, but then the All In um, advert came out and it looked really good. <laughs> and I'm weak um, because it would drive me mad having two issues missing got to bear with me as well, I've got a real long nails today, so it could be awkward picking stuff up. Uh, because there'd be a gap of two issues missing before, from when I stopped to when All In started, I got the back issues, so I got 151, 152. The art in the backup strips are lovely. <laughs> the main two stories are illustrated by Mike Hawthorne. Thankfully, he's off Batman now. He is god-awful on Batman. It's just, when you go from... Jorge Jimenez to him it's like it's not a step down it's a fold on it's like you're falling down 20 flights of stairs in quality it's just bad but if you compare it to like a stand just a regular comic it'd be great but because it's going from Jorge Jimenez to him it just appears really not good and the, first, the absolute power stories were meh backup strips were better than the main stories put it that way so yeah, they were doing kind of like a heist kind of thing. I don't know. I kind of switched off. So <laughs> I just got these to complete the numbers. So I'm just going to give them a meh out of 10. I can't even mark them. But we then move on to All In with 153. Great Jorge Jimenez cover. Fantastic, beautiful artwork. And a good story by Chip Zdarsky. There's none of the nonsense of Robux, mind transfers, traveling back in time, multiverses, losing his hand or anything like that. It's just a good crime detective story, which is when, for me, that's peak Batman. Why, Chip, why couldn't you have done this right at the beginning? <laughs> I enjoyed this. This is an eight out of 10. Artwork is fantastic. Story's really good. And apparently this is if the rumours are right, this could be Chip Zdarsky's last story because there's big, very strong rumours coming around that um, Jeff Loeb and um, Jim, I uh, don't know if you've heard of him, Jim Lee. I've, I think he's an up and coming artist, but anyway, uh, but they're meant to be taking over Batman next year. So, <laughs> but, so it kind of frustrates because this has been like the first Chip Zdarsky story I've really, really enjoyed. And then I found his coming go of it. But there we go, 8 out of 10. But yeah, I'm back on with Batman. What the hey. One thing that does niggle, $4.99, but they've got rid of the backup. So it's just 23 stories, I think. 23 story pages, something like that. Then we move on to the other All In, um, Birds of Prey, by Kelly Thompson, the regular writer, and new artist Sam Basri. Artwork. 
is just beautiful, really clean line, really fun story. I've enjoyed Bell Spray full stop. There's only been one issue I didn't like when it's like the chibi ones, like the cutified baby versions of them, but this is great. I love her writing of Big Bard. I'd love to see her do a Mr. Miracle and Big Barter, Barter comic. Not one full of bags, just a good comedy romp. I'd love that. But I'll get my Big Barter fix in this. And yeah, it's great. It's a good jumping on point. It sets the scene perfectly for the new storyline. It's very Batgirl centric. And obviously I think that's just to do like a soft introduction to get people really falling in love with Batgirl if they haven't already, Cassandra Cain. Um, because she's getting her own series soon by, oh, it's the writer of Christopher Chaos, not James Tanny, but the one who write, writes with him, but I forgot what his name is. Um, but yeah, he's apparently doing the story. Um, so yeah, really fun setting up the scene for this. So Cassandra Cain's undercover. Um, yeah, and I don't want to say much. I, I just want to say it's, it's, a, it's a great jumping on point. If you've not tried Bird Spray, this is an ideal point to try it only three dollars ninety nine wonderful art great dialogue fun story eight out of ten and then we have one that i didn't order but i saw it on the shelf so i put it in my box and this is lobo cancellation special gorgeous artwork look at that cover by cow hearts so the artwork's by cow hearts it's written by um cow stark so the two cows are on it it's brilliant, it's $5.99, but it's about 40 something pages of story in here. So you get a chunky story for that. Paper stock is really good, nice and thick. Colouring's delightful. <laughs> right, okay, this, if you notice, you can open it. It's not in a bag, it's not in a red band bag. It's done the sensible thing of saying it's for 17 plus, which it definitely is, it's not for kids. It's not sensationalizing violence like the red band monster said oh look we've got blood oh let's put it in a bag it's not making it gimmicky it's aiming at adults it's bloodthirsty it's how lobo should be it's fantastic cow hearts was born to draw lobo i'm a big fan of lobo back since the early 80s and this is some of the best lobo artwork since the days of simon bisley really really enjoy this so he basically is sent on a quest by this <laughs> apparently he's kind of dropped off the radar so he's not viewed as the main man anymore and uh, so he's been <laughs> just hanging out on this um backwater planet <laughs> and then he gets this call to help this um like alien royal family <laughs> and so he leaves his plant the planet in typical Lobo style, that's all I will say. But there's a reason this is 17 plus. It's fucking bloodthirsty. Marvel Red Band comics, they bag it up if it's got one page with blood in. This has got pet bodies flying apart, disembowelments, heads being ripped off, arms being ripped off, blood splattering everywhere, and that plastic bag inside, and it's glorious. It's bad, it's gnarly, it's chaotic, and it's hilarious. 9 out of 10, this was a perfect read. I don't know if I want them to do an ongoing, but I'd like them to do like maybe quarterly one shots like this, like one every three months. That'd be so good with the same team because it was just a perfect fun read. It's like a really, it's a good throwback to the outrageous Lobo comics of the 90s. And I had a blast reading this, so 9 out of 10. It's great for people who, like me, who have fond affection for the old Lobo comics. And it's a great introduction for those who've maybe just seen them in guest spots in Superman, etc. Really, really good comics. Very strong one shots. And um, very good value. Five dollars ninety nine for forty odd pages of story. And then we move on to the Elseworlds one. <laughs> Ow. Spike myself. Look at them. They're lethal. I could kill Wolverine with these. <laughs> I feel like Sabretooth. Ah. I don't know if that's Sabretooth. Is this more Sabretooth? Okay. <laughs> that's Sabretooth on downtime when he's just not fighting anybody. When nobody can see him, he's like, mm, I'm a pretty cat. Anyway, I <laughs> don't know what I'm saying. And I've not drunk. I've not had a drink in months. So maybe I need to drink to sober up. Who knows? Anyway, this is Batman Waffle, Waffle, Waffle. Batman Gotham by Gaslight. The Kryptonian Age, number five. I love that cover. I love this series. I thought it was going to be a 12 issue, but apparently it's only a six issue. 
It's by Andy Diggle, artwork by Leandro Fernandez, colours by Matt Hollingsworth. Oh, it's beautiful artwork. Just look at that. DC have not got any weak teams on their comics at present. They're hitting all cylinders, not just some comics you have you can have a great writer and a really average artist. Not DC, they've got perfect teams. So it's a really good Western reinvention of Batman and DC Universe with like a steampunky kind of vibe. Lex Luthor's a bastard in this. Um, it just progresses the story along at a clip at a really fast break, it's space. Um, so we see this version of Superman. He's the sheriff of the town. He doesn't carry a gun. He doesn't need to. And it, yeah, it's just a fun read. But I don't know how they're going to wrap it up in the final issue because there's so much on all corners of the story. Uh, so I don't know. But I'm having a blast reading. I'm loving the Elseworld comics. Nine out of ten. Talk about brilliant, fantastic comics in Elseworld. DC vs. Vampires World War V. That cover is amazing. The artwork inside is amazing this is everything that blood the marvel one blood debt blood bank whatever it was called who cares that shitty marvel one in with gorgeous art but weak story this has gorgeous art but such a really strong story it you don't need to have read the other series but i do recommend reading it because it's a blast as well um, it's written by Matthew Rosenberg, who's fantastic. The artist by Otto Smith. The artwork is just really European in flavour. Even if you're not a fan of the DC Universe, you don't need to be. This is its own beast. This is what I like about the Elseworlds titles. They don't cross over one another. They don't go into multiverse theory or whatever. It's just read it for what it is. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's one of the best comics out there. It's just a fun violent ride it's everything you want in a vampire comic being a superhero comic is just periphery it's more as its heart it's a fast-paced horror comic and there's a really fun backup strip by the he uh, matthew rosberg does a comic called what's the furthest place from here which i highly recommend from image with artwork by tyler boss and tyler boss does the backup strip in here he does the artwork and he also writes it and it's about batmite but because Batmite's no more, or is he, that's all I will say, um, he's looking for a replacement. So initially, <laughs> initially he becomes, um, he becomes Bat, Bat Force or Bat Geo Force. <laughs> it becomes uh, Geo Force, Geo Might. So that's it, because he sides along with um, Geo Force. And it's hilarious because he kind of tests Geoforce because he's Batmite, so he's a, men he's a menace. And he tests him to a point where basically he kills him. <laughs> so he thinks, oh, that wasn't a very good person to um, emulate. So he goes through a, a whole slew of lesser known superheroes um, with similar catastrophic ev uh, events. And then he f latches onto his ideal person who he can become a, a mite for instead of Batmite. And it's brilliant. It's a perfect ending. And I absolutely loved it. It's just a fantastic, really good, fun comic. 9 out of 10. I'm leaving two particular ones. I'm going to leave three to the last for the DC Pal. And you'll realise why. Because these are the three of the most hype. So we'll come to those in a bit. So All In Now has gone weekly with action. There was a lot of hoo-ha about that. It is a big ask for a, for a, a reader. This is one of the reasons why I stopped my Marvel comics. I thought, do I want to get four, Marvel, four or five Marvel comics that I'm kind of like, hmm, about? Or get a weekly comic that I really do enjoy the writer and the art on? So, I went with that. So it's for the rest of the 30 pages of story, though. You get a backup strip of Supergirl by um, Mariko Tamaki and Skylar Partridge. Which is very indie style artwork really nice artwork you get it builds up a nice mystery in about 10 pages to eight pages then there's the main superman story by mark wade and clayson henry and cut colors by matt herms the artwork i'm not normally a clayson henry fan but the artwork in this 
is just really nice. Maybe it's the colour it's within, but it's a really good, solid Superman story. Mark Wade really gets Superman. I'm in it. I'm happy to get this for every week. It's worth it. $4.99. It's worth sacrificing other titles to get a comic I'll enjoy. 9 out of 10. And it's actually made me... I paused World's Finest. I didn't get rid of them. I've still got them around here somewhere in my piles. Um, of uh, World's Finest. And because of this um, absolute power, I'm going back to World's Finest. So I've ordered the last four issues of World's Finest. So they'll be coming next week. So I'll do an overview of them. But yeah, I'm, I'm basically going to... I'm just in in it for any of the titles that Mark Wade's writing on DC. He's got, it's like he's got this sudden second wind. He's always been a good writer, but he's become like the superhero writer. Yeah, 9 out of 10, with great art by Clayson Henry and Matt Hams. I, if you're on the fence about this, it's worth it. Get rid of some titles that you think are just average and go for this instead. Then we have a one shot. This ties up the loose threads from um, Green Lantern War Journal, which was the John Stewart's book by Philip Kennedy Johnson. And it ties up the threads that have been going on within the regular Green Lantern title by Jeremy Adams. The artwork, it's. I don't know if it's bad, but it's. No, it's bad. <laughs> it's by. Um, Salvador La Roca, who used to be really good, but I don't know what's happened to me. Look at Kilowog. He's got tiny, tiny hands. Tiny, teeny, tiny, teeny hands. He'd make a good American president with those hands. Um, <laughs> so there's some panels which are really good, like that's really good. But then there's other panels that don't make sense. You have to like double back and read it. He's great on splash panels like this. But action shots are things where it's trying to tell us the story part the story's on the side he's rubbish on so it kind of pulls you out you have to like reread it again to get the gist of so you have to rely on the words more than the visuals which isn't good for a comic um but saying that the story by jeremy adams and philip kennedy johnson is really good it ties up all the loose threads and sets the stage for the later the new story arc what we're starting in green arrow green lantern even all in um number 16 which is out next week and that's a hint of what's going to happen. So story, eight out of 10, artwork, five out of 10. So I'll round it up, about seven out of 10 in total. Right, we'll move on to the final issue of the event comic, Absolute Power. Really great comic, really nice art. I've loved this comic, the artwork, work, artwork, the artwork by Dan Mora has been a joy to look at. The story, it's a, it's a Hollywood blockbuster. It moves along at such a fast clip. There's bits that don't get resolved. There's a bit, few clunky bits of dialogue. But as a whole, it does not stay its welcome. I like it that it's just four issues. I only got the comics what I regularly got. I didn't get any other comics just to get the whole story. And I, I didn't get lost. So I, the story kept me engaged. And even though it's a bit clunky... It was fun, which is what a blockbuster should be. It's been one of the best event comics for a very long time. I really enjoyed it, eight out of 10. I do recommend getting the collections when they come out if you've not been following that. And then the big, 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 big launch comic from last week was a one shot. And it's the Alpha and Omega all in special. So the they do recommend you read the Alpha part first, which Story plots is by Joshua Williamson and Scott Snyder, but the dialogue is by Joshua Williamson, with art by Daniel Semper. So this is basically all the superheroes realizing that they need to get the Justice League back together, especially when it comes to fighting the big bad, which is Dark Side. So an event happens. Booster Gold makes a decision. He mans up. Darkseid does something that causes a big rupture and tear in time and space, which resets the plot, the, basically the whole premise of the DC universe, but not in a clunky way, not in a confusing way. There's now basically a universe created by Darkseid. Darkseid's essence is in this universe. 
and so it's like our universe but with, with dark sides essence of things are harder um, and so it ends on the alpha side but like that and then the story continues on the omega side which plot again by Joshua Williamson and Scott Snyder but the dialogue this time by Scott Snyder with art by Wes Craig who from Kai of Fame who does fantastic artwork on Dark Side. So this basically shows how the absolute universe is formed and the new um, Diacosmic. I love the use of the sound effects like the boombox. It, it's epic. It's everything you want in a Dark Side comic and New Gods comic. It's cosmic. It's chaotic. It's violent. It's got grand operatic dialogue when you need it. Yeah, this was a perfect. Um, it launches the all in the all in range of comics and also the absolute comics perfectly. Um, it was four dollars ninety nine. And I think you've got about 48 pages of story. <laughs> DC are honestly doing the Lord's work this year. Yeah, really enjoyable. Um, I think I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Just because it's more like a prelude to the whole of the new series. The comics that are coming out after this. Um, so, it's like a stepping stone. So that's why I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. Um, but yeah. I do recommend picking it up if you've not already, or if you can still find it. Talk about if you can still find it. The big, 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 big launch of this week was Absolute Batman. I was tempted to get some of the alternate covers, but nah. Get this, it means can stick, stick to the standard price ones. And plus the Nick Dragotta cover is just gorgeous. This is a complete...